Hunting public lands is not something that you just fly off the seat of your pants and say, hey, this year I'm gonna go hunt public lands. You really gotta put in your homework because there are a lot more people accessing that property and a lot more bigger diversity of people hunting that property. There's gonna be rifle hunters, bow hunters, um, you know, you name it, that can be, can be accessing it. There are some properties that are owned by either state lands or owned by timber companies that are open to the public, but that you still have to ask permission for. They offer access on a limited basis or on a first come first serve. If you can get in on some of those properties, those are always great opportunities to hunt. Timberland property out here in the West is awesome because the timber companies own large tracts of, of timber and those big timber areas can be great for hunting big big bucks, especially where an area has been cut before and there's a lot of new growth, and those timber companies all, almost always allow public access. Other things I look for out here in the West is um, adjacent agriculture. You know, whether there's some private property or some agriculture that, that butts up against the public land, water sources are always important in some of the more arid parts of the country. And uh, you know, you just have to take a look at the entire picture. I guess to summarize everything up is, is to hunt public lands, you really have to have a plan. You have to find a property, no matter which state it's in, there's gonna be some public lands that is huntable. It's not gonna be huntable all the time. It's not gonna be huntable every day of the season, but it's up to you to do your homework on everything and all of the elements that are involved and decide when it's gonna be the most effective for you to be in there. The next thing is just to get out and scout and find it. You know, scout during those winter months, the early spring do some glassing from a distance. But you've just got to figure out that area just like you would as if it was your own uh, private land lease. The main thing that I don't want to do is I don't want to go in and either burn out an area or burn myself out. If I do my homework, whether it be spotting, you know, glassing the, the, the property from a distance or putting my boots to the ground and walking through it during the winter months, I'm going to determine when is going to be my best time to be in the woods. And then you're going to want to determine also what other hunters around you might be, might be looking at. If they're hunting public land, some people might be looking at just ease of access. Some people might be looking at just going in as deep as you can possibly be. What I like to do is take a look at those times. If, if this is an area that I'm going to hunt during the rut, I want to be on those fringes, I want to be in those funnels and in those pinches to where I can be most, most effective when the bucks are cruising and scent checking and looking for those does. Um, and that's where knowing the area around you is going to be crucial because you'll know what deer that are off of the property might be doing, whether they might be coming onto that property. For more videos like this one and tips and techniques on whitetail hunting in general, whether it be public land, private land, crossbow, archery, rifle, go to whitetailexperience.com.